Well, hello, traders and investors. I'm L.A. Little. This is your daily Neo T wrap. We take a look at these markets, and we do it from a neoclassical perspective, asking ourselves what happened today, what does it tell us about the coming ones. We use supply and demand on the charts. That's the neoclassical part along with trend, qualified trend. And we use that information to make decisions about what happens uh, on a daily basis, a weekly basis, any time frame that you're interested in, intraday or as far out as monthly. Do the show four times a week, every Monday through Thursday, broadcast at 4 to o'clock Eastern Time. It's archived on YouTube and it's under the channel LA Little. If you want to subscribe, just reach up the right hand corner and do so. Anytime I push public content, you'll get a notification. As far as what happened in these markets, here's the numbers. Uh, you had the sell down here. Silver, oil, gold, uh, kind of a safety place, except for oil, you know, is doing its own thing. If you look at the indexes, big moves across the board here. Russell up one and a quarter, NDX, NASDAQ up a percent. Same thing on the uh, S&P. You had uh, movement taking place overseas. Uh, the only place you didn't have it was in the DAX. Elsewhere, pretty much up across the board. As far as what these markets are doing, Let's take a look at the charts, S&P 500. Now, we've had we've had this big long range, right? And this range has been going on now for, in this case, uh, if you count them, it's about eight weeks. Usually towards six seven, you know, six seven number, you're going to get something happening somewhere. And if you look at this, what you have on the you know that weekly time frame is you have a pretty clear-cut bottom laid out here, right? And a pretty clear-cut top laid out. And this thing's just been drifting down inside this range, hasn't tested this low again, certainly hasn't tested this high again. And that's on the S&P. Now, the S&P, of course, is just one measure, but it's the broad measure of the index. If we spin it over here to the daily, Right, what we're coming back into, we have two bars. We have these two are the real bars that, that stand out. And then the other uh, item that we have going from a neoclassical perspective is this bearish retest regen. We came into that area once before the bearish retest region here. And what did it do? It tried to regenerate lower. Did not make new lows though. Now it's bouncing back up and what is it? It's back in there again testing into it. As part of that, it's testing into this bar and this bar. And the real key is going to be able to, is going to be to get over those bars. If you get over these bars, then this range is probably it, not 100% done, but it's probably done. You're almost certainly going to test that top. And so this range that's been in place we're getting a second test. The second test has about a 40, I think it's about 46% that it's going to regenerate lower. So you're getting to the point now where the odds are starting to shift. And they're starting to shift to where you have a better chance of potentially getting higher. Now that's still, even if it gets over this, it's going to have to get over that and that's going to be hard. At the same time, you've got other indexes doing other things and we'll look at those in a second. So, you know, when I, when I sum it all up, yeah, we got a bounce. We're up into the retest region again. It's going to try to regenerate lower. We'll see if it can. Odds are increasing that it will be able to get higher, but there's still like a 50-50 chance almost, about 46%. So if it does get higher, then it's got these other bars to contend with. If it does regenerate lower, then you get into a different situation, and that is, is that you really want to see it come break this low. If it doesn't, right then the next trip back up the odds are going to shift even lower in terms of the ability to regenerate lower you know to push it down again and matter of fact if it can't break this you probably want to start thinking about buying that's the s p if we look at the uh the nasdaq now the nasdaq really actually let's go to the ndx next the ndx is where the strength is and one of the things that happened uh, not that long ago is the XLK finally got a reset, the sector. That had been bullish beyond belief. And as we know, that's where all the strength has been. Well, today, they pushed this back over this breakdown, or actually to the breakdown bars high. 
543958. 5443. So you just get over it. Question is, is can it can it run up there and test the top? And will it have the volume to get over it? You know, or, or will it the, the will the supply over um, will the supply be greater than the demand at that price point? First you gotta get there. So you got back over a key spot here. Can you hold it tomorrow? Can you get to the top? This is where the juice is. And with resets on the sectors, right now they have the ability to get it going again, although we do still have extensions uh, on the longer term time frames in terms of NTTF. And so we pull that over, right, we're seeing here 72% on this particular one. And it's the same elsewhere, it's not just there. Uh, if you look at the um, uh, the NASDAQ, the NASDAQ's pushing up, going back and try to test the tops. So the broad market hasn't been able to get over it. Russell, now the Russell actually got some decent juice again today, but the Russell is captured inside this big bar still. The Russell has been the weakest of the group. And so that's still a range too. So the only place you got the real juice is the NDX. The NDX had broken higher once before, but it was a fake out compared to all the other indexes. In other words, it got higher and nothing else went with it. Will that be the case this time? Time will tell. It's a little too early to, you know, to, to go buying into this market still. You need more evidence that it's going to continue higher. You don't have that yet. Right now, it's still a range trade, even with the juice that you saw today. And I know there's a lot of factors starting to, you know, factor into this thing to allow this to potentially go higher, but you're just not there yet. And even if you do break higher, and here's that uh, XLK I was talking about, you went sideways, you reset that MTTF. That MTTF now, you know, was nosebleed before, now it can get a reset and go bullish again. Problem is, is that these others are still extended. So even as you push higher here, you're still, you know, from a longer term perspective on the weekly basis, you're still pretty stretched. And if I pull the weekly chart over, you can see why. I mean, this thing has been just, you know, unanimously bullish uh, almost this entire chart. And so the fact that you're getting a rest is what's needed, but that rest probably is going to take longer, right? It's probably going to take longer. If you just go back to this big push here, then you got a rest. Could it get higher? It tried and tried and tried, but it still couldn't get over it, right? Traded back down to the bottom and then eventually got the move. And so, you know, when you look at this, you're just in the early stages of this kind of arrest that's taking place. We'll see if this thing can actually take off again without a reset. Odds are it can't. The way you get a reset is you create a swing point low. The way you create a swing point low is you get a low up here without a lower low for six more bars. And if you can do that, then you can break it at a higher level than having it come all the way down here and break this one that you see there. So the, the gist of all this is, yeah, you got some moves today. Can you get higher? Yeah, you can get a little bit higher, but it's still a range trade, folks. It hasn't changed. Let's, uh, let's take a look at the world markets because you got the French election coming up. And we've had, over the last year now, we've had two big events that took place. Both of those events ended up being buys and they were sells into the news or on the news but then they immediately came out and they bought them well in the french market in the cacs you actually have some decent juice coming in today with the election three days away what they're telling you here is they believe and um, we did get the under over yesterday and it was lighter volume i didn't have volumes yesterday to look at we did get the big juice back up to the top of that bar. Now, it didn't have quite as much volume. It got right to the top of it, and I think it held under it, 50, 80, and yeah, just underneath it. So you test into it, you can't get over it. This one's probably trapped until the election, but if you look at this on a weekly basis, this has had a good run. And if you pull over to look at these, what you're going to find is on a short-term basis, this thing is extended but not on the long on the intermediate term. So pulling up that uh, daily chart again, 
what it says is that you want to reset a swing point low. Well, how do you do that? Well, you got to come break one of these lows that are here. And so those were, they were getting close, but they wouldn't let them do it. They pop it back up. I'm suspicious of the way this is setting up. It looks to me like you're going to get some sell the news again and then potentially set up the buy after that. And so that's the way that one looks. Folks, there's a big range. These ranges, you know, they can move 1%, 2% and still be in the range. And today you got a nice, big, strong move. Yesterday you had a bleed all day long. Today you get the big push back the other way. Is this thing going to carry, make new highs, and actually take off and start a new leg? Odds don't favor that. Can it test into the top of the range? Sure it can. And that's kind of what we're seeing happening here. It's getting up. It's trying to test in the top part of the range. Breaking out of that range will be another story. Uh, I think it's way too early to even think about that. I think the whole question is, is can it even get to the top of this range? Uh, and there's, there's really two key areas. The, the main one is here. The other one is the bearish retest region. If you can get over this, you're probably going to get stopped by that on the first attempt. Uh, but these are the things you should be looking at. See if the NDX can get over and stay over the tops. Uh, that would be another thing that could drive this, right? Because the tech sector is what's driving this market. That's it for tonight. Have yourself a great one. I'll see you next time. Good night.